What's up, everybody? Glad to see you. In this video, I'm going to introduce everything that I've been working on with the Spanish content website. Because this is going to be kind of cool because it's something that's kind of completely separate from my YouTube channel. So I'm going to be able to see how effective the things that I've been learning over the past couple years are when I actually take the time and really get into something. Um, I'm really happy to be working on this project. I think that it's a very good opportunity for me to challenge the parts of myself that I want to grow. And also, I'm confident that I can provide a very useful product for a demographic of people that typically don't experience or receive this kind of information. And I'm really curious to what that's going to do. Um, I'm very, very excited to see how things are going to go. So this video is me explaining to you guys my process for getting this website created, the details about the website, etc., etc., etc. So let me break it down real quick. It is a monthly access website. You pay $10 per month to stay accessing it, and it's basically a course. But it's not like just videos. You also navigate the website. There's text, descriptions. Um, I'm trying to think, okay, how can I teach these concepts in text and in video, and how can I get people to interact? Um, I'm really trying to think, how can I use a website to teach a group of people something instead of how can I just have these videos on a website, if that gives you some more context. And the first month is free. So it's designed so that if you want, you could power through it in 30 days and get it for free and not pay anything for the information. And one of the reasons for this is I really need to appeal to my demographic and my target demographic is Nicaraguan people. And Nicaraguan people do not have a lot of expendable income. So having some way to get this information for free for those who are more ambitious and more driven and more opportunistic is, is, is part of the campaign for me. That's something that I think is going to be important into making the word of mouth that spreads this campaign more effective. Because this is another thing. I live in Nicaragua, right? And regularly I find myself in a position where people are interested in working online or learning about what I do or something, but I don't have, whoa, that was crazy. I don't have any Spanish content to show them. Right? So this goes into the obstacle. I know exactly what I need to do. I know what my target demographic is. I know the traits of the target demographic. They have an abundance of free time, an abundance of frustration towards authority and kind of the system and regular jobs, desire to work, but being frustrated, feeling unable to find it. But also one of the key differences here that I didn't realize is the free time. Because in the United States, it's way more common for people to go into debt to live alone and like be independent and that kind of thing. Whereas here in Nicaragua, it's much more common for people to live together and live with their family like into their 30s and that kind of thing. That's becoming more common in the States, but it's very much not the cultural norm in the US. That's changing now, but here it's very different. And this results in people having a higher chance, Nicaraguans have a higher chance that they have a roof over their head without a job. So this results in a lot of people here actually having significantly more free time. And that's not something that I understood until I came to Nicaragua and actually lived here. I'm not saying nobody has free time. There's plenty of busy people. But in general, things are a lot more laid back. People do have a lot more free time. And these are all things to know because I need to understand the mentality of the people I'm trying to make a product for. What are problems these Nicaraguans experience when they're interested in earning money online? My job is to outline all the solutions for all these possible problems. And what really helps is that I've already worked with multiple Nicaraguans from like the ground up of having Nicaraguan citizenship and not using like my US citizenship in order to get like financial accounts set up and use services and systems. And I know how to do that now by doing it with a Nicaraguan person and tr testing it with other Nicaraguan people, not using my own information. So I feel very confident that I understand the problems that are present to Nicaraguans who are trying to earn money online. And now one of the things I 
also need to do with this is it all needs to be in Spanish. And this is definitely the trickiest part because I am not fluent in Spanish. I'm definitely much more comfortable, but at the same time, I'm at like a, a comfort space where I'm not really progressing my Spanish. And that's one of the reasons that I want to do this because I know me as a person, I don't get really good at something until I start working in it and really doing something I enjoy with it. And with Spanish, like, I'm horrible at studying, really bad at studying. But I know that I can make these lessons and help people. I know that it's going to be a very good thing for a lot of the people here. So it's very motivating for me. And I know that working in Spanish will be the thing that makes me more comfortable speaking Spanish. And to transition back to what we were talking about earlier about making the word of mouth with this project very effective here. Because again, remember, I'm going to be in a scene here where I'm one of almost no people distributing this information. I'll have very, very little competition. Okay, keep in mind, I'm used to being a drop shipper and having the most competition possible. I'm not saying no one else is doing this, but we're talking about having tens of thousands of competitors to having like five or 10, and I don't even know who they are. I don't know where they are. I just know they probably exist, right? Completely different game. And it's gonna allow me to spread much more effectively with like some simple word of mouth marketing as long as I focus on that. And basically the premise of that is I gotta do it in Spanish. I can't do it in English and expect that it's gonna spread through word of mouth because people here speak Spanish. Pe like young people know some English, but Spanish is what they are comfortable with. That's where they can have their emotions be activated. And the whole point of this is to really make a connection and show them really emotional, valuable information. So I have to do it in Spanish, okay? And I don't know Spanish. So that's why this project is both something that I know I can't do yet and something that doing it will push me to be able to do it. Does that make sense? So I'm, I'm really excited about it for a lot of different ways. But now you guys understand, okay, you got a basic premise of what the website is. It's teaching people stuff. I'm not going to go into all the different kinds of content that it covers. Um, I've never made something like this in English, so I probably will after this, but I don't know. Right now, for some reason, I want to make it in Spanish. I'm more interested in that. Um, I, okay, I should deviate and explain why that is. So... You guys might think, oh, Jack, why do, what are you doing? It's easier. You know English. You can already make these videos. Why don't you just make this membership website in English? Why are you jumping into making it in Spanish when you've never done it in English before, which is way easier? And that's true. But to be honest, I don't think the information is that valuable in English. Like, at least from the U.S. perspective, self-employment's cool, but the U.S. hasn't, like, declined enough for it to really be more viable than getting a job for most people. Like, the people who get into self-employment in the U.S. are much more kind of motivated than people in the rest of the world because they have to go a lot further. In the U.S., you need a couple thousand dollars a month regularly to realistically leave your job and actually be okay in most places in the U.S., be able to provide for your family and that kind of stuff. And that's only in the bottom of it, right? That's a huge obstacle. That is a big barrier to entry because the reality is in Nicaragua, you just that point is $600 of online income. If you earn $600 a month online for a year or two in Nicaragua, that is good enough money to leave your job and pursue that income. Like realistically, you are being responsible doing it that way. In the US, that is not true. And this touches into why I think that this information is more valuable when it's in Spanish, because the people have more to earn from it. The chance of them succeeding with this information is more likely than people who are in the United States, simply because of the amount they need to succeed in order to change their life. In Nicaragua, it's way lower. We're talking about like almost a quarter of the amount of money that you would need in the United States, between a third and a quarter. Imagine that you're participating for tryouts, right, for a test, and the top people get selected in this test. It's like in the US, you need to score a 90, whereas in Nicaragua, you need to score like 40 or 30. It's way easier. And that's why it's so much more appealing to me to translate everything into Spanish. Because of this reason, one, I'm dealing with people who are more likely to actually apply the information. Not only are these people 
they don't have to earn as much money, but they've typically had harder lives, and the people who are interested are kind of a bit more serious than people in the U.S. who might just kind of be like, oh, that's kind of cool, I want to check that out. That happens everywhere. And I'm not saying all people in the U.S. are like that, also not saying all Nicaraguans are motivated. I'm just saying that in general, when people experience more hardships, um, they, they do get a bit more able to make their own decisions, right? Instead of just watching the world pass them by. Not always, but it happens. And these are all reasons that I feel confident that if I make this Spanish product, when I make this Spanish product, it will do well, and not just instantly, like I will continue to work on it because of the way it's set up. I can continue to improve it without spending large amounts of time based on talking to people. And once I have this website, it instantly monetizes any public speaking that I do when I'm here in Nicaragua, okay? So now you guys understand, I've introduced the Spanish content website. I've explained it on live streams, but I really wanted to get it down in this video because it's going to help you understand what the next couple videos on my YouTube channel are gonna be because they're all about setting myself up to create this Spanish content. So basically what I'm doing is I have a list of a bunch of topics that I need to explain as part of this course. And I don't know exactly how they're gonna look, but I know I need to be able to talk about these topics in Spanish. So I'm gonna be doing YouTube videos where I talk about the concept in English, and then I explain how it's relevant to Nicaraguans, and then I publish that, and that's just a YouTube video to, to this channel because you guys will benefit from that sometimes. Some of this stuff is going to be trivial. Some of it's going to be interesting to you. But then I take that video and I transcribe that portion of it into Spanish, and then I just keep practicing that over and over and over again. I already did this with one video on my channel. I have one video that's in Spanish, um, and it's not like... I, my Spanish was worse when I made that video, and I practiced it a lot. I was able to communicate the concepts. You can tell I'm a foreigner. You can tell I'm not comfortable. And I really want to work on that. With, with this course, I really need to like feel more comfortable. I can be a little bit quirky with how I speak Spanish, but I need to be able to have that strong, confident tone. I can be wrong, that's okay. But I need to be able to sound confident when I'm speaking in Spanish. I can do that in English. I can just turn it on, and it's very useful, especially when you're making a course or you're consulting. You need to use confidence toning when you're talking to people. So I, I need to get that down in Spanish, and the only way I'm going to do that is through repetition over and over and over again. So I could actually show you guys here. This is the plan. So you can see this is my workflow. It starts by picking a question off of this list. So I'm gonna show you that later. The light's all screwed up, so you can't see it. But I pick a question, I record the video in English, talking about the obstacles that Nicaragua will face afterwards, and then I translate it, and then I reiterate, and I record a new one in Spanish. I don't publish that new one, though. Um, one thing I want to get you guys, make sure you guys understand is like, I'm still not creating the final videos for this website. I am just putting myself in a position where I understand every single thing that this website needs in order to be effective. And I'm getting myself comfortable with communicating about all of these subjects before I attempt to make them, right? So these are a bunch of the questions, okay? What are income streams? What's traffic? What is content? Uh, how do you buy cryptocurrency in Nicaragua? How do you use consulting? What is Amazon FBA? How do you use YouTube? All that kind of stuff. Everything related to online income, I need to explain in vivid detail with as few words as possible. <laughs> okay, and then here's the marketing strategy. So there's four components of the marketing strategy. There's email list. So I'll have a year's worth of email lists. So that's 52 emails. And each of those 52 emails has to solve a specific problem. And that is the recurring theme of this entire project. I know the group of people that I'm trying to communicate with. I know what their typical problems are. I know what a lot of the emotions they experience are. So all that I need to do is create answers to the problems that these people face. All right, guys. Now I'm going to just explain the first concept, OK? and then I'm gonna transcribe this later. So the first thing I'm gonna explain in the course, or one of the core 
fundamentals of the Spanish content website is something I refer to in English as the law of online income. I don't know how I feel about calling it that. I might want to change it. I'm not sure how I'm going to translate to Spanish exactly. But it's basically, based, it, the premise is that no matter how you earn money online, whether you are being paid by a company, you're an employee, or you're selling stuff from Amazon, or you're creating your own product, or you're doing porn. Like, no matter what you do to earn money online, it applies, it, it listens to a law, okay? It's like gravity on Earth. Gravity affects everything. We have to understand how gravity affects us in order to be able to live a good life, right? So we don't die, so that we, we are able to predict when things are dangerous, etc. Same thing with this law. If you understand the law of online income, you can predict and understand how businesses are making their money, okay? And it always is this. The law of online income states that in order for profit to exist, in order for money to be made, a product must exist and traffic must exist and these two things must interact, okay? So there's three concepts, four concepts here. The law of online income, what is the law of online income? It is products, traffic, and profit and the relationship between these three things. The law of online income states that combining a product with traffic is the only way to produce income. So all income is doing this somehow. Even let, let's break those scenarios down earlier. Imagine you are employed by Google and you are programming, okay? You are paid to work from your computer. You don't have your own business, you're not selling products, but the law of online income still applies here. There is traffic and there is a product. The product is your time. You are a service. The thing that you are doing, you are, do, you are creating a product for Google. It, a product doesn't have to be a physical, tangible thing. It doesn't even have to be like an intangible digital thing like a website. It could literally be the service of your time. That can be your product. And then the traffic is on Google's end. They're using your product and their traffic to turn it into money somehow. Google's so big that they can do like anything they want and not all the things they're gonna do are profitable, so it's not really the best example. But I just want you to understand that even in a scenario where you are working for another person, you still apply this law of online income. It applies to every time money is made on the internet. There is always some kind of traffic and some kind of product. So it's really important that you understand really well what traffic is and what a product is, okay? So traffic is any time people are visiting, right? If you go to a website, if your eyes see it, if you hear someone talk about it, anytime you know it exists, interaction with people, humans, that's what traffic is. And that's why money, profit can exist without both of these things. Because if you don't have people engaging, you don't have any sales, you don't have any interaction. So even if you have an amazing product, it's not gonna make any money. You have to combine interaction and traffic with the products, okay? So the products is the people part, the, or sorry, the traffic is the people part. That's the act of people listening and engaging and being interested in what you're doing, hearing you out, seeing you, witnessing you, talking to people about you. This is all traffic blog posts, YouTube videos, ads, all of this is related to traffic, okay? Anytime a human does anything, if they visit, that's traffic. A product is anything that can be sold, okay? Think about that. Anything that can be sold. There's two main distinctions of products. You have physical products and you have digital products. A digital product, oh, I guess that there's three actually because there's digital, physical, and service. But I consider service digital, so we're just gonna go with that, okay? You have physical and digital. A physical product is this mouse, something you can touch, something you can create, whatever. It's physical, this hairbrush. Anything you can, like, touch, you can see in the real world is physical. A digital product 
is what you're watching right now. This YouTube video is a digital product that I created. This online website that I'm working on, this Spanish content website, is a digital product that I am creating, okay? They're different. The key distinction is that a physical product must be recreated every single time it sells. A digital product recreates endlessly. And this is super important to keep in mind because a lot of people limit themselves to the physical world. They think that to do business, you must create physical things and then sell them and then recreate them again and sell them. You know how irritating it is to constantly recreate the stuff you're selling all the time? It is incredibly time consuming. And it's also completely possible you're gonna create a bunch of them and none of them are ever gonna sell. Physical world's hard, yo. Completely different. That's why I highly encourage you to exist in the digital world of products where things can endlessly replicate. You create something once in your past two years ago and it can change your life now. Very appealing, right? Okay, that's the concept. That's what I now have to transcribe. Um, and I have to make these videos much more effective when I teach them in Spanish. But I also have to teach slower. It's going to be fun. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to recreate this a lot. But the premise here, uh, the video that I'm making in Spanish is talking about the law of online income. Not sure how to translate that yet. But it states that a product plus traffic equals profit. Maybe it should be rule of online income. I don't know. Not sure how. Maybe I should look up some famous mathematician things and look at their Spanish versions and see the phrases they use. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Sorry I haven't been making too many YouTube videos. I used to go from an angle of making loads and loads and loads of content all the time, um, just trying to develop myself, trying to get more confident, trying to figure out what I want to talk about. And ultimately now, I... I want to come from the other perspective. I want to put more time into making my videos and making my content. And that's why I've kind of been on the low on YouTube because I've been working on these, these more kind of high level advanced projects that take multiple days and multiple weeks of time. Like the Spanish content website is something realistically I'm going to be working on for a large portion of this year. Um, but what's great is I don't feel intimidated by that. I know it's going to take a long time, but this isn't some amount of hours that I'm trying to just churn out. These are concepts I'm trying to explain to teach myself a language so that I can help people I care about. I know that this is going to work for me because I know myself really well. I've had so much time to set a scenario up where something like this can happen. And now, as long as nothing crazy happens, this website is going to come out. I'm going to procrastinate. It's going to take a little bit longer than I want it to. I'm going to get frustrated sometimes. But it's happening. I can't escape it. It feels like it's inside of me. I already know it. When I go away from it, I think about it. When I try and relax, I think about different obstacles that people face. And I remember things that I'm experiencing. When I go out in public, I get flashbacks into how the Nicaraguan experience is different and how I can use that to make videos that relate to people and help people in these situations. I'm confident. This is going to be something really exciting. All right, guys. If you ever want to do any kind of consulting with me, check out a link in the description. Go to calendly.com slash Jack Dermot Pittman. I do 30-minute consultations for $20. Uh, usually this is just basic like assurance stuff. You need somebody to be like, it's going to be okay. You got this. Here are some actionables. You were worried, but you're just freaking out. You're going to be okay. Here are the things you need to do. That's what people usually use it for. It's also used for accountability. If you need to push yourself, you need someone to be like, hey, you said you were going to do this. Are you going to do it? You said you did it last time. How'd it go? Call me up, man. All you do is go to Calendly.com and schedule it. You don't even need to message me or tell me anything. You just pick an available time and you tell me what I'm talking to you about. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time.